animigos, and welcome to Keyframers, the animated collaborative coding live stream where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Korshid, also known as at David K. Piano. Uh, right now, we're giving a quick overview of the techniques used to build this animation. Uh, if you have been paying attention, you probably saw us actually build this animation and do all this already that we're, we're going back into it a little bit because there was uh, one piece that we were stuck on that um, we were able to to work through after the fact um, so we're just going to cover that real quick and then we'll cut we'll cut back over to uh, the the other explanation and you can watch the full um, full live video of that we've got that on our channel yeah if you want to see how we tackle the rest of the animation then just stay tuned and we will show you the rest sorry again if this seems out of line but we are excited to show you some lines so <laughs> if you have any questions you know feel free to ask us in the chat or leave a comment below yes. and we'll be happy to answer yeah uh so going going back into it so uh we we were building this interior design project website by tubic uh, it's got this nice line intro and then a grid uh, background kind of building in and then uh, the, the text animation. Um, so what we used for this is uh, splitting.js. Um, this is a library that I uh, put together um, with uh, some help from uh, Christopher Wallace, uh, where it basically applies CSS variables to elements uh, in order for you to do CSS animations. So it's not an animation library, it's an animation helper library. Um, so for text, uh, for example, it splits um, characters up into individual spans and then gives you the CSS variables you need to apply those. Um, so that works really great for that. But it can also generate elements uh, for, say, a grid, for example. Um, so here is uh, here's the original animation that, that we did live and and released um, has most of those elements there but we were we were really struggling with the grid um, mostly on my end sorry David um, <laughs> uh, so I, I went back to it and here's the cleaned up version um, that you just saw uh, so using uh, splitting.js I've got uh, two two elements here, uh, grid lines uh, with data vertical and data horizontal, um, and those are being uh, split down here, uh, splitting by cells. Um, for the vertical lines, there's eight columns. Uh, for the horizontal lines, there's, there's six rows, uh, and that corresponds to our uh, grid background uh, that we'll go into in a, in a little bit. Uh, stay tuned in the video. Uh, so basically splitting is generating all of those elements if we inspect in here you'll be able to see in grid lines uh, the data vertical we've got a cell grid and then the individual cells uh, for each um, so do you remember what we were struggling with uh last last time or in the oh in the just episode? a whole a whole slew of things <laughs> no <laughs> uh well, so part of the issue was uh, we weren't we weren't able to like really get the lines in in place like um, that we were just kind of faking it uh, in in a yeah. few different ways. Um, so what I went back in and did was was fix that. So here here's our uh, grid line CSS around line uh, 170, David. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got an overall opacity on them, so they're nice and faded out. Uh, the and then. We're using uh, splitting's CSS, so there's a there's a splitting cells uh, CSS that uh, helps with the with the actual layout of like this grid um, and gets all the cells in the proper place. And then uh, there's a cell inner element um, that actually spans the full width and is is full size, so that you can do cool image effects. We go into that in the live video. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, check that out. Um, but the the cell itself is the size of like that particular grid cell um, and, and with overflow hidden you only see that little piece uh, so by doing overflow visible now we can span the full thing um, and then with our cell inner um, i've got that set up with a border 
Um, so that that is going to be um, the for the horizontal lines. That's the top border, so it gives us you know just one straight line across. Uh, for the vertical lines, it's a uh, uh, left border. Um, and then I've got a transform on that. You see, you see that, David? That's, yes. Uh, that's some fun, <laughs> fun math. Uh, so uh -huh. basically what I've calculated, these, these are all, uh, these cell inners are all the full size of this entire grid area. Uh, but by using transform, uh, translate, we can actually push that off to be like in a particular uh, column or, or row um, with, that, with that line. So uh, we're using the column index and the row index uh, multiplied by the column size and the row size. And those are just calculated using the total number of rows. So this would be, um, or the total number of columns here is eight and the total number of rows is six. Um, so you get a percentage value for that. And so it's, uh, it's translated and moved over um, so that each one is in the proper place. Uh, so now for each individual um, animation, for the vertical lines, we have lines in. Um, that's that initial expansion animation. Um, that's just going from scale Y uh, zero to scale Y one. Um, so that gives that nice effect. Nothing, um, nothing too wild there. That, that actually made it a lot simpler than what we were doing, you remember? Yes. <laughs> and then uh, the inner cell um, is, is getting this vertical line in where it's going basically from translate X 50%. So this starts them all off in the center. And that's why oh. you only see one line. And then they're translating out to the, the position set up here in the, in the transform. So they're going to their actual position. That makes sense. And that's a cool little trick where you don't define the two keyframe exactly. because it'll just go to whatever the original properties were. Yes. It cool. makes it so much easier uh, to just, to just focus on where you're going from or where you're. Going it's to. yours for just 1995. <laughs> one day, one day. Uh, so the, the horizontal lines is, it's actually much simpler because we we're only doing um we're only doing them in kind of from the top up here uh so we're going from uh translate y negative 100 percent, so they're off off the top there and then um and then they come into place again with uh with that uh final transform value and then uh, they're they're staggered a little bit if you if you see um as they're coming in just just like the original animation uh but i didn't use animation delay for this, David, you remember mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, a trick? I, I think you you taught me taught me this uh, using animation duration instead of animation delay. Yeah, and that's like a, it, it, it's different than a normal stagger because um, it's going to uh, be a different duration for each, and it's sort of a nicer effect because they all end at the same time despite starting, or they they you know it, it's not like a jagged movement. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah, I like I, it. To to me, it's it's a little bit smoother because uh, you're you're expanding the the time of the animation rather than than offsetting where the animation starts. So they're basically all starting to move at the same time, but they kind of slowly move, uh, settle into place um, de depending on how how much of a stagger you have. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm using those uh, splitting splitting JS uh, variables. They're uh, just using the the cell the cell total minus the cell index so that the um, that the first one is actually going to be last and the last will be first. Um, getting biblical on you on you there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically the the lines. Uh, it, it it's actually a much simpler setup than than we were even working with. Um, it it just my brain was not working that day, and I'm I'm so mm. sorry, David. Uh, <laughs> we have those days. It's okay. They're called Mondays. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, this is a, this was just a quick follow up to it. Uh, I'm going to cut back into our, our other explanation of the like grid background and the, and the text animation. Cause that's all, that's all still, uh, still the same. Um, and, and there'll be links, uh, below to, to both versions of it. And, uh, we'll also have the link to the full live episode if you want to see the, uh, the full explanation. So, uh, 
yeah, here we go. Our show is uh, supported by our sponsors, CodePen at CodePen.io, CSS Tricks at CSS-Tricks.com, and viewers like you. You can pledge at Patreon.com slash Keyframers. The links are available below. The grid background is, is slightly more complex, but not, not too bad. Uh, so we have an animation on each of the cells, uh, this grid in animation. So we've got a rotate X that gives it a 3D transform. That's this uh, kind of animation there. Uh, and uh, sorry, a scale Y, just so that they, uh, they don't actually appear until they start animating in. With the 3D transform, even if you rotate something um, so that it's perfectly facing uh, the, the camera, you can still see little bits of it. Um, and we're applying our perspective um, and, the, and the 3D kind of context uh, here to the full grid background so that you get kind of that, that 3D, true 3D effect uh, where you know these are a little bit more angled uh, and these are a little bit more angled, but in the center, they're a little bit more dead on. Uh, and then the translate Y just kind of gives them a little bit of like fly in movement. So they're rotating in a little bit like that. Uh, and the real special kind of magic of the effect is uh, by this animation delay here. Um, so we've got a few variables up at the up at the top um, that's just helping us coordinate the animation. We want we want to. Um, you know, delay everything in the in the proper way. Um, so, uh, grid delay and grid duration are the main things there. Uh, grid delay plus the each of the cells uh, has a cell delay times the cell index. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, that just going down the line that helps them stagger in from top left to bottom right in those. Uh, this is a variable applied by splitting. Um, you can see that, that cell index there. Um, and so that helps us stagger them in. Uh, would you like to explain how you colored them, David? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, coloring these is not quite straightforward, but we were able to use a trick because splitting applies the CSS variables directly on the cells. You could actually target that just like you target any other attribute on an element. So we could target style and look for the row and the column. So it's supplying it by column index and row index. Now, normally these would have a double dash, but whatever, we don't really need those. So we're just looking for that column index and that row index. And so what this does is it takes like, uh, let's say one, two, three for the cell and let's say two, three for the row. And so you're going to apply it to column one, row two, column one, row three, column two, et cetera, et cetera. So it's basically going to combine all of these columns and rows and apply whatever is inside that cell mixin right into the content. And um, yeah, maybe in a future version of splitting, we'll actually have data attributes that we could target instead. But for now, this is how you could do it. Yeah, uh, and, and so the splitting cells is meant uh, to handle like splitting up images like that. That's kind of the main the main purpose of it. So we could have done this with like a background image. Um, this this was just a, a little bit quicker of an approach uh, for right now. Um, so there are other ways to accomplish that. But uh, yeah, that's <laughs> a, a little <laughs> little nice uh, sass mix in for you there. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then our our actual uh, content animation. We're, we're we mainly just did that that heading the the same principle kind of applies to to all the other stuff but you did the uh let's see uh the slide in effect uh, right so uh the the text itself is is just a slide up animation and it's got the content delay um on there uh just just so that it's coordinated with the rest of the animations um, and that's that's just established up at the top uh and that's just uh overflow hidden on the parent plus um, a translate Y on the actual inner content that's in this in the span um, so that it gives that cutoff um, text in effect. 
but the actual uh, white to black, what did what did you do for that, David? So the whites to black, we were also targeting with that mix in. Uh, you could see we have a cell to black mix in, and what that's going to do is it's going to add a pseudo element, and that pseudo element is black. And we just tell that pseudo elements to slide up once, uh, you know, once all the content comes in. So we're doing some sort of choreography here. It's not as straightforward as some of our previous episodes, which I do encourage you to check out to see a more reasonable approach to doing choreography. But for this, it suffices. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of uh, little interesting techniques uh, that you can that you can use and apply. Um, there's there's probably some better ways to go about setting this all up or you know handling the the coordination here uh, but we're showing a pure CSS way to do it you know other than a little helper Please. JavaScript uh, <laughs> you could but, write all these yourself but it's tedious <laughs> uh, right and that that's the thing splitting splitting is mainly there just to do all this setup for you it's not handling the animation it's not it's not going to do the animation for you but it gives you the tools that you need um, to to do that. Um, so yeah, that's that's the fancy grid animation uh, for the most part. Uh, mm -hmm. Our our own interpretation of it. Uh, so yeah, any anything else you wanted to wanted to cover, David? I uh, I think that's all. We also made use of CSS grid. So um, of course, this being a grid animation, besides splitting, we have this uh, grid template areas where I used it. It looks cryptic. It looks like something straight from the matrix, but I used it to sort of figure out where all the things go. So, yeah, yeah. It, you know, and yeah. I ended up not needing uh, this header section, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> well, it's cool. now now that we're <laughs> um, uh, now that we're wrapping everything up, probably the better approach uh, to this would be having all of these uh, instead of the way that splitting, you know, kind of nests the elements inside. Um, either with with like subgrid um, would have been ideal, um, but having just all of these animations in kind of this parent element that has the actual CSS grid. Um, just having all of those cells within there and then using CSS grid to place them in the proper place, which is essentially what's happening with the with the cell grid element. It, it does have a, a CSS grid on it um, right there. Uh, but if we had those elements within the within the parent grid itself, um, we could have you know targeted um, things by the template area and all that kind of stuff. Um, now David's just messing everything up for fun. Well, yeah, that's really top, and this should be PTM. Um, yeah. So th this is just a visual of how that looks, and this is why grid template areas is so useful because you have a visual map in your CSS itself. It's really cool how they did the syntax. You could lay it out like this and have a mini visual of how your app is supposed to look. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Super handy. I dig it. All right. Uh, well, don't forget uh, this. If you're if you're just watching this short summary, uh, we have the full live process of how how we how we built this uh, from scratch. So check that out. It it we dive into the techniques a little bit more, um, and it might make a little more a little more sense. Um, but uh, yeah, check that out. Mm -hmm. And, All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode, by the way, and you'd like to see more, you could support us by pledging at patreon.com slash keyframers. That's right. And we have more uh, video <laughs> content available at youtube.com slash keyframers. So subscribe uh, to our channel and uh, so much for watching. Until next time, adios, amigos. Adios.